Hello everyone and welcome to Wally Mods and especially welcome to the first episode in my Factorio modding series. In this series we're going to be talking about how to create your very own Factorio mods so let's just get right into it. In this first episode we're going to talk about the basic mod structure which is making sure that Factorio knows how to read your mod and it can use it correctly. What we'll accomplish in this video? We'll get a better understanding of Factorio's mod structure, a basic understanding of Factorio's data lifecycle, which is how and what order it loads mods. We're going to create our very own basic mod. We're going to add it to the game. And then I'm going to show you where you can find it in game. And with that, I'm going to tell you about some common errors that you might come into with making mods, and also where to find these errors whenever they occur. All mods in Factorio follow the same file folder format. When creating your mod, your main folder has to follow this structure. You have your mod name, then an underscore, and then the version of your mod. For example, if I'm making a mod called new mod, our main folder name will be new mod underscore 0.0.1. And this 0.0.1 can be whatever you want. It could be 1.2.3, 1.5.7, it's whatever version you feel that your mod is at. In our folder, we have all the main files for our mod. And the first one is the info.json file, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Next, you have a thumbnail.png. This is the photo that will pop up on the mod portal or in-game in the mod portal whenever people are looking for your mods. This is what will show up. There's also a changelog.txt. Now, this is optional, and it's basically a version history of your mod to show in the mod browser. We also have a thing called settings.lua. In the settings.lua file, it contains all the information on how you can set up different configurations of your mod and give the player and or user an ability to change or tweak your mod to their own liking. Next, it loads all the data files. In these data files, it defines all the prototypes or new items that you would like to add to the game. And finally, there's a control phase where it loads the control.lua file. These control.lua files are the runtime application files. So these are going to be running while Factorio is running. In the control.lua file, it's a place where you can define basically all of your interactions with the mod. You can have custom commands. If you want to make fire come from your feet, you can do that here. If you want to update the, a certain ore, if you want to get rid of ores, this is kind of where it is held. Now before we move on further to possible subfolders, I want to talk a little bit about Factorio's data lifecycle. Now this data lifecycle comes in three stages which the first stage is the setting stage, then you have the data stage, then control.lua initialization. So basically the control.lua stage if you chunk this all together. In the first setting stage, all the mods load their settings.lua files. They load this in a certain order. It's called natural sort order. If you would like to learn more about that, it's not terribly important. Um, you can read more in the Wikipedia file on natural sort order right here. Like I said, it's not terribly important, but if you're a curious mind, you can go here. After it's done loading all the settings.lua files, it loads all of the settings updates.lua files, given that there are some, because these are optional files. After that second mini phase, it loads all of the settings final fixes.lua files for each mod if they have them. So these are basically for if you need to override other mods. Now it's not guaranteed that you're able to do this 100%, and if you can't get it to work, it might be something that you need to name incompatible for your mod. The same sort of thing happens in stage two with the data.lua file. It loads all the respective data.lua files, then the data updates.lua files, data final fixes, and that's it. You, do, you use it for the same type of purpose, there's not too much different about it. And in the final phase, it's a little bit more complicated, but basically this is just it loading and initializing the control.lua file. So it loads, starts it in the game. If you want to learn more, you can come here and look at it, read it in verbosity, or I've left a link in, I've left some links here where you can find it. This is the online version, or you can find it in your offline docs. If you'd like to find this, 
you navigate to where you have Steam downloaded. Then you go into your Steam apps, your common apps, Factorio, and then in Factorio you'll find doc HTML, and then the data lifecycle HTML file is the same thing as this on the screen. Moving back to file structure, we have a couple subfolders that you can include. We're not going to talk about these folders in this episode, but we will definitely in future episodes. The first file we can talk about is the locale file. This basically defines the localization files, so the translations for all your items, and in-game when it says, I don't know, heavy armor, and, and explains with a brief definition, that's where all the definitions are going to be, is in the locale subfolder. Next we have a place where you can keep your custom scenarios if you want to make those, custom campaigns, tutorials that come with your mod, and or migrations. Migrations handle prototype changes between versions. So if you have a mod and you're adding items to this with this mod, this is basically going to handle the transitions between Factorio versions. Alright, so the first thing we're going to look at is the info.json file. I've added some comments here, but you want to make sure to get rid of these before you put it in your game. I'll show that later, so don't worry about it too much. In this info.json file, it is a JSON file format, which is JavaScript object notation. If you don't know much about that, I highly suggest looking into that at least a little bit. It's fairly basic. It's just a way to keep things organized, and it's how a lot of games work with their description files. In JSON, you typically have the name of your attribute, and then a colon, then your definition, whatever it may be. And you have to make sure to have a comma at the end of the line saying that another attribute is coming. For Factorio, this file includes the name of your mod. So I have the name, and my mod's name is mod name in this example. Quick note, this must match your folder name. So the main mod folder that we talked about previously, it has to match this portion right here. If not, you're going to get a bunch of errors and it's not going to be happy. Next, we have the mod version. Um, in my example, I have 0.0.1. I'm not 100% sure if it needs to match this version. I don't think it fusses about it, um, but I always keep it the same. Next, we have the title attribute. And this is basically a title when selecting the mod in the mod panel. So basically, whenever you select your mod in the mod panel, this is the top thing that will show up. You also have the author, me, Wally Mods in this case. You also have your Factorio version. Now, quick note about this, it must be a major Factorio game version. And what I mean by that is down here, if you come to the naming convention, you have your main.major.minor. And whenever you're defining this attribute, Factorio version, you don't want to include the minor or else the game, it, will, it won't work. So instead of 0.17.78, for example, you would just have 0.17. And if you're working with older versions, the same goes true, 0 0.16, 0 0.14, whatever you want to use. Some optional ones, you can have a contact page, which is an email or a way to get contacted should there be any issues with your mod. You can also have a home page where it can be found on the internet, a description, and then you can have some mod dependencies. Now if your mod depends on other mods, this is where you'd put them. Now down here there's a quick explanation of it and I'm just going to explain a little bit about how that works. If you want a straight up dependency, you can just have in quotes the mod name. Now, if you want an optional dependency, you add a question mark and then a space and then the mod name. If you would like an incompatibility with another mod, like I mentioned earlier, you could have an exclamation point, a space, and then the name of the mod, which is incompatible with it. And also, if you want to make sure a certain mod that is you depend on is above a certain version, you can have the mod name and then the certain type of equality operator and then the version number. This also works if you need it less than a certain version, less than or equal to a certain version, um, exactly equal to a certain version. Although I don't recommend basing your entire mod off of someone having an exact version. You can do this if you need to. Whatever works. All these ones with stars are what you need for a very minimal cut of the line info.json file. But, and these other ones kind of add meat to it if you have 
other information on your mod. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our very own info.json file, add it to the game, and I'll show you where you can find it in game to see if it works. So here I created a quick info.json file. I named my mod YouTube and the version is 0.0.1. .0 .1. I'm going to add a quick title saying modding with YouTube. I'm the author. I'm just going to use on Factorio 0.17 where you can find me at Wally Mods on YouTube. Description, this is a demo mod for amazing new modders out there. This is all you need. Make sure it's in these curly braces and you are ready to go. Now as you can see I pulled up a couple file explorers so I'll show you where you put your new mod. I have my mod in a folder called YouTube underscore 0.0.1 making sure that this YouTube matches the YouTube over here in my info.json file. So if you go into that all we'll see is I have one file called info.json and that is this file over here. Now to put it into Factorio we have to find your Factorio folder in your app data roaming. Now if you don't know where to find that you come down here you type percent app data percent then it'll give you a file if you're on Windows then once we have your app data roaming I'm gonna scroll down and find my factorio file my factorio folder that is and here we go this is the same file as here some of you might not already have this mods folder if you've never used mods um, you can go ahead create a new folder name it mods you're good to go once you found this click into that and you're gonna copy this and then you can just put it right in the mods folder and then boom you're done now I'm gonna load up Factorio and I'll show you where you can find your new mod alright now that we're in Factorio I'll show you where we can find our new mod so in the main menu here if you go to mods and it might be a little small but if you look down here it says modding with YouTube and that was our title that I typed in in our info.json file you can also see our description. This is a demo mod for amazing new modders out there. Our status in, is enabled, so basically if we want to run this mod or not, it doesn't do anything at this point, but this is where you turn it on and off. We have our version number, 0.0.1, .0 author, contact, and now I didn't put a link in my mod portal. However, it makes one automatically. This will just point to a place on the internet that doesn't exist, so you'll get a 404 error. But if you've already added this onto the mod portal, this should link it up. We also have the factorial version and no dependencies because we didn't place any. Now that this is all set, I'm going to show you a few places where you can run into errors and how to fix those. One of the most annoying things is when you load up your game, you come into this mod screen and your mod is just not there. One interesting thing that the factorial developers decided to do is that they don't have a direct error output when you mess up in the info.json file. So if you're in Factorio and your mod's not loading, it's most likely has something to do with this file. What you can do for that is find the changelog file for the entire game and then read through that line by line. I'll show you where you can find that now. Now right now I'm going to put an error right in the info.json file and see what happens when I load up my new game just so I can show you what might happen. Say I'm in my info.json file and I want to add a comment because I think I'm in another language or something. I'm going to say this is a comment that breaks the mod. Now once I save that, I'm going to re-put it in this mods folder, replace the file in the destination, and load up Factorio again. Now that we have Factorio loaded up, I'm going to check and my mod is not there anymore. Now at this point, I'm pretty upset but I'll show you where exactly you can find the error output for the info.json files. If we work our way back to the app data roaming file for Factorio, we can see there's a file right here called Factorio Current. Now I'm going to bring this into my text editor. You can open Notepad, it doesn't have to be Sublime, whatever you'd like. Once we're in the Factorio Current log, I can read through here. If I keep looking on the left, I see error, and it's with the mod manager. So this is looking up. And it says, adjacent parser error in the package metadata. Unexpected character forward slash. At our, and then it gives our file name in the certain line. So line number two. If I come back to info.json and I look at line number two, 
we can see that it was not expecting to see this forward slash. So this would give me a little insight to, oh, I cannot do comments in JSON. So I'm going to remove this. And if I rerun the game, it will show back up. Now this factorial current log can save you a lot of stress if you just look at it. I know it looks intimidating, but once you get used to reading stuff like this and looking for those keywords like error and mod manager or whatever you need to do, it will save you a lot of time and anguish. Now one more place where you might see some errors or errors pop up is when you're first loading your game. So say I'm loading up Factorio and when the when it's loading up right here and it said quickly loading mods and then it has base mod, whatever you need. Whenever it says loading mods, there might be a window that pops up and it has an error output for you. And you can find a lot of errors there. Another place you might see it is whenever you're loading up a game and you're about to hit go. It, another window might pop up and it has errors there. And I highly suggest you read those errors and get used to reading errors because you will run into them a lot in modding. A lot of times when you're modding, you don't exactly know what you're supposed to do or what the game expects. However, with Factorio, it's great because you can follow along with the documentation online right here. Earlier in the video, I left some links for you to read more into it. If you're really serious about modding in Factorio, I highly suggest that you read into these. They have a lot of great details that I can't cover 100% of in this video. I'm going to give you the stuff that works and just enough information to get your mods up and running. But like I said, if you are really interested in this, go read this, get used to reading documentation. I'll explain a little bit more in later videos, but this is what I suggest. As a quick wrap up, in this video you learned how to make your first mod, how to add the mod to the game, where to find in the game, and then a couple errors and mishaps you can get when making mods. In the next video, we'll talk about how to make your mod actually do stuff by implementing custom in-game commands. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll get to it as soon as I can. But other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.